close your eyes and focus on the breath and talk to yourself about the breath. How is your breath going right now? Is it too long, too short? If you have trouble finding the breath, take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. And notice where the sensation of breathing is strongest. And then, then allow the breath to find a rhythm that feels good. This requires that you notice things and you ask questions. The Buddha calls this directed thought and evaluation. It's what enables the mind to settle down. But it's also what enables the mind to talk, which is why right speech is an important part of the practice. If you're chattering away to yourself all day about this, that, and the other thing, when you sit down to meditate, you're going to be chattering away about this, that, and the other thing. The practice is something you do only when you're sitting here with your eyes closed. As you go through the day, you've got to keep control over the mind's chatter and keep control over the way your mouth chatters as well. As John Fuang used to say, if you can't control your mouth, there's no way you're going to control your mind. So you look at the basic principles of right speech. There's no lying, no divisive talk, no harsh and hurtful speech. And no idle chatter. If you find yourself engaging in any of these, any of these things, stop. Okay, you're going to make it more difficult for the mind to settle down when you finally do close your eyes. And you're also harming the peace of the people around you. We don't have a vow of silence here, but we do ask that people ask themselves when you're going to say something, is this necessary right now? Is it true? Is it beneficial? Is this the right time and place? A little social grease is enough to keep things going, but a lot of social grease, like too much grease in an engine, just makes it difficult for the engine to run. So we talk about what's necessary to talk about, what's true, beneficial, timely, and then leave all your other thoughts unsaid. And when they don't, when they don't get said, then there's less likelihood that you're going to be thinking about them. You realize, why well, think about it? I'm not going to be talking about it anyhow. And that way you get some restraint not only over your mouth, but also your mind. And then that carries into the meditation. So think about what you say before you say it. As John Fung used to say another time, it's better to think about what you're going to say before you say it than have to think about it afterwards. Because when you think about it afterwards, it's usually about regret. You know, why did I say that? It was a waste of time. Or you find, or you find yourself getting involved in needless controversies. You watch over your mouth, and then the mind that's watching over the mouth gets trained as well. When the time comes to sit down and you have to talk to yourself about the breath, it will talk about the breath, because it, it's learned how to think about the things that are worth thinking about and not think about the ones that are not. So the practice goes all through your life. Because it's the same mind that's meditating, it's the same mind that's running the rest of your life. So try to get it so that it runs both sides well. 